the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Okay, today I would like to talk about the microscopic mechanism of ion transport and reaction at liquid liquid interfaces. I'm a chemist and uh, I'm very much interested in liquid interfaces. Okay, so there are many liquid interfaces around our life. For example, liquid liquid interface is relevant to the extraction, separation, and the phase transfer catalysts and sensors and so on. And liquid gas interfaces is very important in atmospheric chemistry, in the atmosphere, for example. And also liquid interfaces are quite much relevant to biological or polymer interfaces. So my basic question is, how to understand the structure and dynamics of molecules at interfaces? Probing the molecule at interface itself is a challenge for us. First, surface tension and surface potential, these are very traditional properties and it provides lots of information about interfaces, but sometimes microscopic interpretation is very challenging. And another example is the spectroscopy, surface sensitive spectroscopy, such as SHG, SFG, or surface X-ray. This is an example of SFG. It uses two laser lights and it detects the signal of some frequency. And the beautiful point of this is it selectively detects that interface regions even though the same molecules exist in the bulk region. Okay. That kind of surface selectivity is essential to understand the liquid interfaces. And another, of course, another example, if that's important, the method is molecular dynamic simulation. It allows us to investigate liquid interfaces as if we really see. Okay. Today, I want to focus on liquid liquid interfaces. Okay. And liquid-liquid interfaces have a fundamental function of separation, extraction, and electron transfer. And these functions are more or less related to mass or charge transfer. As you know, liquid interface is a, interface is a boundary between two phases. Therefore, the controlling that transfer is a very important and essential function. And many functions of liquid-liquid interfaces come from this. And in terms of the structure, liquid liquid interface is very characterized with a very dynamic, fluctuating. Maybe it's not as dynamic as turbulence, but anyway, as a molecular scientist, characterizing that the surface structure itself is a challenge. Okay. Today, I discuss the ion transfer through interfaces. And how can we understand that ion transfer mechanisms? to obtain a molecular picture related to the softness of that interface. Okay. Okay, I prepare actually three topics. The first one is barrier mechanism of ion transport. Ion transport itself has an intrinsic barriers, and this is the first topic. And the second one is a mechanism of facilitated ion transfer. Sometimes ion transfer is facilitated dramatically in a catalytic manner with some selectivity and we want to understand the mechanism. And the third one is electron transfer interfaces. Electron transfer, as you know, was driven by the solvation according to the Marcus theory. And the liquid interfaces provide very special solvation environment. It's very interesting to understand the electron transfer at liquid interfaces. However, due to the time limitations, I mainly focus on the first topic, barrier mechanism of ion transport. Ion transfer at liquid-liquid interfaces has a very fundamental question and has a long tradition. And in fact, I think there are two essential challenges to understand this. First one is to obtain the intrinsic rate of transfer at interfaces. Okay. Measuring intrinsic rate itself is a very difficult issue. And this is a famous graph of that reported standard rate constant of tetraethyl ammonium through water nitrobenzene interfaces as a function of year, reported year. Okay. This is very interesting. The reported rate constant constantly increases as a function of years. Okay. <laughs> yeah. mm. And uh, this illustrates. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, okay. This illustrates the difficulty to understand the intrinsic rate. Actually, people measure mainly using the electrochemical manners 
to measure current. However, the current <coughs> involves intrinsic rate and some other factors like the diffusion in the bulk regions. So cali calibrating that uh, these other factors is a very challenge. And uh, due to the progress of the uh, experimental progress, including that uh, micro pipette. So now, okay, but anyway, that, uh, this is, no, people believe that this is a kind of artifact of the nano pipette. And these days, people tend to believe that the realistic rate fall in the 0.1 to 1 centimeter per second region. However, if we try to understand the rate as a diffusion limited rate constant, that should be about 100. So therefore, there must be a mechanism of retardation. Okay. And people argued many things, like local diffusion coefficient and interfaces or uh, desolvation plays a role of protrusion and so on. But in order to understand that mechanisms, realistic information of interface structure is essential, okay, I think. And the second challenge is how to understand the realistic interface, including fluctuations. As I told you, liquid interfaces are very dynamic and fluctuating. And this is a very the typical example was first reported by Ilan Benjamin, when ions move from water phase to the oil phase, it follows waters and form water finger structures. And uh, the question I'm, I was interested in the role of that kind of fluctuations in transfer kinetics. This is a theme of this topic. Okay. So in my early uh, preliminary research, I studied the CL minus transfer assisted by a hydrophobic cations, tetrabutyl ammoniums. Okay, this is a typical picture of molecular dynamics. When CL minus moves from water phase to oil phase, first, in the presence of the tetrabutyl ammonium, first ion pair is formed at interfaces. And then, when ion, the ion moves to the oil phase, then water finger is formed. And at some point, water finger breaks, and then that ions move into that oil phase. Okay. And we investigate the free energy profile of ion transport without the tetrabutyl ammonium or with the tetrabutyl ammonium as a function of Z coordinate, normal coordinate to that interface. Okay. I mean, the negative region is water, positive region is oil. Okay. And this is a free energy profile. Okay, as a function of Z. Cl minus is a very hydrophilic ion, so anyway, this is unstable in the oil phase. However, there is some difference between that due to that, the tetrabutyl ammonium. Okay. And we see when ions move to that oil phase, first it increases, and during this region, water finger is formed and elongated. And at some point, water finger breaks. And then the free energy becomes flat. And uh, we found that the breaking point of the water finger was influenced by the presence of the counter ions. Ion pair facilitated the breaking of water finger. Okay. And during that kind of the reactions, we encounter a difficulty to treat that water finger structures. During that MD simulations, sometimes we have this kind of that structure, and some kind, sometimes we have this kind of structure. Okay, even though the position of the ion is almost the same, once this, this structure is formed, it persists, and they never exchange each other during the DMD simulations. So this, is a difficult, this gives us a difficulty to the proper sampling. Okay. So, this means that the two structures should be treated as a different state. And obviously, the Z coordinate is not sufficient to describe this, to distinguish this. We need some other coordinate to distinguish the two structures. And we try to formulate that the water finger structure because this is very essential for that the ion transport process. And the water finger coordinate should be defined at instantaneous configurations and uh, that allows us to pinpoint water finger formation at breakpoints. And that should be continuous and differentiable. 
and we formulated the bottleneck distance between hydrated cluster and the bulk water, like this length. This W is small, that means the water finger is small. If W is large, that is broken. And we found that kind of coordinate is naturally formulated with the help of graph theory. Okay. Suppose we treat each water and ions as the vertices. And then we have considered the connectivities. Suppose we have some threshold distance. And uh, distance smaller than the threshold, it should be considered as connected. And the distance larger than that threshold is separated. And we suppose some threshold distance, and then we can draw that this kind of graph. Surely, the threshold distance is small, that ion is not reachable to that bulk region. By gradually extending the threshold distance, at some point, ions become reachable to that bulk region. And this distance can be treated as that the water finger coordinate. That definition is quite neutral, natural, and that is regarded as a minimum threshold to percolate, to allow percolations. And we calculated MD simulations of that two-dimensional free energy surface as a function of Z coordinate and the W coordinate. Z is, of course, essential coordinate, reaction coordinate to describe the ion transport, and also we consider the W coordinate in a very standard uh, systems, transport of chloride ions through water dichloromethane interfaces. The, snap, the, slab, the scheme of MD simulations like this. We use a kind of slab geometries with a three-dimensional periodic boundary condition with the bar sum, and we use polarizable molecular models and calculate the free energy, two-dimensional free energy surface using the replica exchange umbrella sampling. Replica exchange umbrella sampling uses the bias potentials on the 2D surfaces, like this kind of thing. So you decide that usual force field between the intermolecular interactions. We put some bias potential for the ions. This uh, actually that the limit that the regions, the sampling regions. And we put this kind of umbrella samplings at various points <laughs> and uh, run in parallel. And sometimes we switch that the, the potentials occasionally according to the metropolis the criteria. So these parallel samplings allows us to perform extensive and uniform sampling over the 2D surfaces. And by analyzing the set of the MD simulations by the weighted histogram analysis, we obtain the 2D surface. Okay. And let's go to that result. First, we focus, we discuss the very conventional one-dimensional surface as a function of z-coordinate. This is like this. This is consistent with the previous works. The, the free energy of transfer is calculated to be 16 kilocalorie per mole, which is reasonably agreed, uh, consistent with the experiment. So we surely see that no barrier, which is also consistent with the uh, former calculation. Okay, then I will show the two-dimensional surface as a function of Z and W, and this is the contour of this. Okay, I will show that there is, um, okay, so first I show the snapshot of this. Ions is in the negative side, means that the ions is embedded in the water surface, like this, okay. And there is a uh, valley here, okay. And this valley is characterized by the small W, so actually, this barrier means that water finger formation. Okay. And I will show the snapshot that here. Z is positive and water finger is formed. So this corresponds to this kind of that, the configuration. Okay. And also, we have a valley here. Okay. This is characterized as large W. So it means that water finger is broken. And I will show that snapshot that here. Z is large and water finger is broken. Surely two and three are almost same Z coordinate, but the structure is different, and the difference can be well characterized by that water finger coordinate. Okay. And that is separ separated by that barrier. Okay. And I also show the cross sections of the 2D surfaces. 
at various D point, Z points, like this one, or this one. Okay. And I just show you, is there is a ridge here. Okay. And in the smaller W region, there is a minimum here, which is characterized by that water finger structure. And the larger region is characterized as a broken water finger, and that is separated by that barrier. And I also show the relative population as a, no, as a, at each W point. The sometimes the relative population is characterized by the Boltzmann constant of that free energy. So I integrated along these regions or these regions to see that the ratio of the water finger form and broken water finger. Okay. And we surely see the structural transition occurs at, uh, around these regions. In that region, the water finger is preferred. At, but at this region, all the broken water finger is preferred. And there should be a transition. Okay. And if we overlap it, you see that the conventional 1D surfaces, structural transition nearly corresponds to the breakpoint of that the 1D surface. Okay. And I want to discuss why that kind of the bistable state appears. Okay because of the two competing factors. In terms of ion hydration, water finger formation is preferred. Okay. However, in terms of surface tension, this is very unfavorable because that the surface is quite much distorted. Therefore, due to the two competing the factors, the two stable structures appear and the barrier in between. Okay. Hmm. And by the way, I also investigated the hydration number just after that water finger is broken. Okay. And this is the distribution of the hydrated waters. And we found that the water number is very large. Average is about 10. However, in that average cluster in the bulk dichloromethane is about 2 or 3. Okay. Therefore, this means excessive hydration. And there must be some relaxations after that. I'm also very much interested in the relaxation process after that. Okay. But maybe I'll talk in, a, in, a, in the future. OK, so far we considered that the free surfaces, but the realistic ion transfers appears with the assist of that external field. Therefore, we put some external field exact amount of external field is uh, unknown, so we assume a very typical value, 0.1 volt per nanometer or 0.2 volt per nanometer in the electrochemical measurement. Surely that ion is asymptotically stabilized in the positive regions, so the barrier appears. In the case of 0.2 volt per nanometer, the barrier is estimated to 7 kilocalorie per mole in the 1D surface. Now, we also consider the 2D surfaces. And the structure is similar, but this region is asymptotically stabilized in that case due to that external electric field. Okay. Now, we find that the, the path should be like that one. And there is a further point appears here, at around here. And the position, height of the further point is 11 kilocalorie per mole. Surely, there is a difference by 4 kilocalorie per mole between 1D surface and 2D surfaces. Okay. And I want to see that meaning of the difference. Okay. 1D surface is a kind of projecting the obtained by projecting of the W surface. It's almost equivalent to trace the minimum point at each Z point. So therefore, this value, this corresponds to like this. However, realistic path is like that. Okay, so this shows that this barrier is missing in the 1D surfaces because the transition occurs almost in the perpendicular direction. So therefore, the, this hidden barrier does not show up in the 1D surface. However, when that hydrophilic ions move from water to that oil phase, first, that water finger is formed, and it, that water finger should be necessarily broken at some point. Therefore, this 
transition should be essential to that ion transport. Okay. And uh, that the implication of this hidden 4 kilocalorie one per year can be interpreted as a rate constant using that uh, Boltzmann factor of about 10 to the minus third, which naturally elucidates the difference between the diffusion limited rate constant and that of the rate constant. Okay. To summarize this talk, so we investigated ion transfer at oil water interfaces, and uh, during that transport, the transition of the water finger structure should be involved. And that produce, that give us free energy barriers, and that naturally elucidate the retarded rate of ion transport. Okay, okay like this. Mm. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my group members and the grant. Okay, and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> All right. Thank you for solving the problem at, at, of iron transported interfaces. Very interesting. We have some discussion from the audience here. That was a very lovely talk. I learned a lot. Thank you so much. I'm not quite sure I understood um, your application of W is W is your bottleneck distance. Is this correct? W, w distance. E, w okay. is your bottleneck distance, the yes, graph theoretical yes, yes. model. So how mm -hmm. exactly did you implement that with respect to biasing along that coordinate for your 2D PMS? Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, this is a kind of technical question. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, we need to, we should, uh, we should pinpoint that the distance of the W. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a kind of standard procedure of that uh, to search that the connectivities. Mm -hmm. Okay, and once we obtain this, we can define the W coordinate at each instantaneous configuration time steps. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can put that the bias potentials for this, for the two atoms. Okay. Ah, yes. So you, so you've defined, mm -hmm. uh, you have a, you have a defined hydrogen bond network connectivity yes. associated with yes. that. Yes, at each okay. point. Okay, for defined water molecules. Yes. I see. Yes. So then you're not actually sampling all possible water molecules that could be fluctuating um, and going in and out of your water finger, okay. right? Yeah. Because okay. you're fixing the node identities. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It, uh, during that MD simulations, mm -hmm. we perform this at each time steps. I see. Surely that the uh, water finger connectivity changes. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so and so. Um, I can, and I, I think Professor Benjamin has also talked about this bottleneck distance as well previously. Yeah. And so it seems to me that this is, um, it's a very nice reaction coordinate, and I really love seeing the 2D PMS. I'm wondering, uh, as soon as you have uh, other ions that are present in the solution, right? You have ion pairing that can potentially happen, or if you have amphiphiles or anything like this. This coordinate may mm. not necessarily, do you, do you think that this coordinate would be extensible to other transfer processes yeah. mm. because you have mm. much more cooperativity mm -hmm. beyond the mm. ideal interface? Okay, I see. Yes. Actually, I also try to apply it to other yeah. systems. And surely the water finger becomes very important in that hydrophilic ions, not hydrophobic ions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, when that ion pair forms, mm -hmm. usually that uh, Total ion becomes very hydrophobic. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the water, the water finger is not very important in that case. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we investigated these cases, and then we have some conclusions. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have some more discussion from the audience? Yeah, very nice talk. Um, so um, you, you talked about the effect of the water finger on the hydrogen bond breaking in the transverse direction. Yes. So one might also expect that there's, in the plane of the interface, mm -hmm. that there would be some impact mm -hmm. both as the ion passes through and the water finger starts to form, mm -hmm. also when the water finger breaks mm -hmm. and the water molecules relax back. Yes. So ha have you considered how, how that changes the fluctuations of the interface or any other aspect of the interface? I mean, that after the water finger breaks? Well, bo mm -hmm. both of these processes, mm -hmm. right? The water finger, when it's formed, yeah. has to have some impact mm -hmm. within the plane of the interface. And also when it breaks, it has to have some impact. I see. As well. mm -hmm. 
Surely that in that case, since we pinpoint that water fingers, then that the number of that uh, hydrogen hydrogen thrusters is unique now. And uh, actually, we didn't consider the dynamics explicitly. We put that uh, free energy surfaces. But uh, surely that the uh, relaxation of the after the water finger break is very, should be very fast. Okay. Maybe I don't know if I answered your question. Okay. Mm. Yeah, uh, so I guess I'm wondering not just about mm. the speed, but also about the, you know, the, the, uh, mm. the length scales. Mm. Time scales. Length scales. Length scales <laughs> within the interface. I, see. Okay. I mean, is, is it just going to be locally damped, or do you expect it mm. to set up uh, mm. additional wave fluctuations on the mm -hmm. interface? And Surely that the, when ions are present, there may be, I guess, that the fluctuation is changed. changed. And uh, that the, Maybe that the total fluctuation depends on that the density. Surely that the fluctuations around that ion should be very different. I'm sure. And I also investigated the length, this distribution of the length of the water fingers. Okay. Yeah. This. Hmm. These are the typical the, this, uh, length of the water fingers. But uh, that length of the finger length depends on that uh, the product of that. The, the number of the, the, water, the waters. Okay, that is a kind of interesting correlation. Maybe I, okay. no, I mean, for the reach, reachable case, yes. the extension has to be the same x y position. But after you break it, you can have many different x y positions for mm -hmm. the right at the break. Mm -hmm. And so there may be some entropic issues mm -hmm. to consider to get the. But, but how, well, exactly where the break occurs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So there's some more discussion from the audience here? Yeah, I have, I have a very nice talk. Um, I have a couple questions. Of the tools of the trade that you might use to uh, look at, uh, you know, your reachable and non-reachable, when you look at uh, HPLC or mass spec or, or nuclear magnetic resonance, which of those three would you find most useful? Studying this further. Sorry. Oh, uh, Sorry. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, mm. Which which tools do you tend to use to look at the mm. reachable versus the ionic versus the? Uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I I don't like to use the word ligand, I, but you're not. Mm -hmm. Hundred different definitions. For okay. The I think in terms of the software. I, in terms of software, we we wrote by yourself, Abasir. So this mm. is all software. This is not uh, laboratory stuff. Not the laboratory stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. We have more discussion from the audience here. Anything? Anything from the yeah. online audience? All right. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.